What's up everyone, it's the Razored Edge and welcome to Operation 5 Hollow Storm here for Gears 5. The biggest update and biggest operation for Gears 5 to date. In this video I'm going to be bringing you guys an overview of all of the brand new content here in Gears 5 for Operation 5 Hollow Storm. That includes Tour of Duty, characters, maps, all that stuff including the main menus and the very first thing you will notice here is the brand new menu music and we have a new background obviously with every new operation we get a new kind of theme going on and that is the Locust Nexus in the background there but before we dive in to the rest of the game here guys be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss any future Gears 5 or Gears of War related content from me but let's jump into Operation 5 Hollow Storm. So as you can see here, we have a whole brand new menu revamp, which kind of simplifies the initial approach to the main menu. And uh, you can hear that remix of the Gears of War 1 and Gears of War 2 soundtrack. Very nostalgic, uh, bringing you back to those Hollow Storm Gears of War 2 vibes. But, uh, you know, we have campaign, multiplayer, boot camp extras, and it's kind of categorizing things a bit better there. And then you have uh, all the news features down at the bottom here. Uh, instead of having to click into the news uh, down in the tab at the very bottom, it'll be displayed front and center, so you'll be able to have more of an idea of current events and updates going on in Gears 5. So you can click into the campaign here. You can see this all new art. You can have, you have Kate on the cover there with the kind of initial uh, signature Gears 5 cover art. Then we have multiplayer, boot camp, and extras. So what we'll do is... Uh, the main attraction of this video is going to be multiplayer, so we're going to hop in here, take a look. So, things have been categorized in here as Versus, Horde, and Escape. These were previously, obviously, in the main menu itself. Uh, with Versus, we now have kind of a new format here, kind of similar uh, in layout. Um, you'll also hear that as you transition through the menu, uh, the theme song also kind of evolves and changes, uh, which gives you more gears to... And Gears 1 vibes so you go into quick play and this is the new format of how the playlists are presented to everybody this is obviously the featured playlist being Guardian then these are the next two popular modes and then you have your co-op versus AI and arcade which are uh, just kind of there and then uh, for ranked uh, these that's how it's displayed right here you have your King of the Hill your team deathmatch your free-for-all and your 2v2 Nashers and it displays uh, your rank progress on the bottom left of all of these and then if you hit uh, F2, or I'm not sure what it would be on your controller, but you'll see the same prompt. It shows you guys what the rewards uh, will be for the rank season. So if I hit F2, it shows me uh, that the reward for me is going to be the Lancer, Nasher, Snob. So there's your bronze, your silver, your gold, uh, your onyx, your diamond, and, uh, and your master. So uh, that's all of those for the ranked rewards. Then, uh, let's see. So that's it for ranked and then you have your custom online and your custom LAN and then it's featuring the beta tuning playlist as blitz because that's what they want to attract your attention to uh, obviously they'll put all the kind of featured events up there that's most likely what will happen um, and then when we go out to horde mode uh, you have now have daily challenges so when you log in each and every day you'll have different rewards here so this one wants you to uh, you can unlock double skill cards you can un unlock up to four of them and then you can get, uh, I'm not sure if it means if you can do it four times or unlock up to four uh, double skill cards. But anyways, um, you get, inco uh, for Inconceivable, you get uh, 300 coins. For Advanced, you get 150 coins. And on Beginner, you get uh, 1,000 class XP. This is class XP for your characters. And uh, if you do the above difficulty, you will get the rewards for the remaining bottom two as well. Then you have Horde Frenzy. And uh, classic horde. This one says no classes, no fabricator. Survive 12 ways with just your Lancer Nash or snub on Operation 5 maps. That's a cool playlist to to dump uh, jump into there. Dump into, jump into. Uh, but that's no fabricator. That's literally like the Gears of War 2 experience right there. Classic horde on river. You can't ask for anything better. And then we have uh, escape here. And so uh, just like horde, you have your daily hive, uh, which gives you rewards, so you can get double skill cards. And for beating on Inconceivable, you get 300 coins. On Advanced, you get 150, and then you get 1,000 class XP. And just like I said, 
It be, uh, beating the above gives you all the bottom rewards as well. And then you have the Featured Hive. So the Featured Hive will be familiar to anyone who's been playing Escape throughout the entire uh, duration of Gears 5. Uh, you'll be given, except this time you'll be given more rewards, and it's kind of presented now as a developer challenge to the player. Basically, the Coalition will give us a set time to beat, and if you do, you get 10,000 character XP. And if you beat these times, uh, you get all those rewards as well. So each and every day you can log in and do your daily here, and then each and every week this will be the harder challenge to get even more rewards. Uh, and then that's all for in terms of how the menu is structured. Uh, this over here is very familiar to anyone who's been playing Gears 5. All the tour stuff is over on the right side of the screen. And then if we click here, you know, this brings you to the store, which has all the new characters, which we'll take a look at in a minute. And then um, we have the news tab here. If you guys didn't know, uh, the Coalition put out all of the What's Up Gears of War and blogs and updates here. So if you want to keep updated with the game without having to, you know, take yourself out of the game, you can check that stuff out here. And then I believe it also brings you to external links if you want to uh, to go even further in depth with everything you need to know about Gears 5 and all of the updates. But uh, that's it in terms of the menu structure. So now we're going to hop into and check out uh, the Tour of Duty. So I have not seen this yet. I've made sure to save my initial reaction. We can see some skins there. So I'm going to hit uh, F2 and we'll scroll up here. So... The first reward is 2,000 coins. The next reward is uh, the playing card loadout. It looks to be, I'm not sure if it's team-based or just multicolored in terms of uh, red and blue. And we get another 750 coins. We get even more of the uh, playing card set. Then we have a new locust or a new swarm, sorry, with the desert scion. We get another 1,000 coins. Coins are kind of the main uh, reward during this obviously uh, the way they restructured the game now is that you unlock uh, a lot of characters through the store uh, By using coins so, so by stacking up coins you can buy the characters that you care for and want to unlock which uh, I think is a good thing uh, And then we get another thousand coins at uh, private two at private three we get uh, the crosshatch weapon skin set at the beginning of that so those are the the marksman rifles for all that then we get another thousand coins, and this is a huge one. We get Kilo Squad Baird from Gears of War Judgment. This is the uh, this is how Baird looked in the campaign for Gears of War Judgment. A lot of people really like this skin, uh, young Kilo Squad Baird there. So really cool to see that. Then uh, another thousand coins, and even more of the playing card uh, weapon skin set for the power weapons. A thousand coins, one hundred iron. Uh, the crosshatch uh, assault rifles, then we get 1,250 coins, another 100 iron, 1,250 coins, playing card, uh, all the marksman rifles for that, and then here's a one, this is the Locust Beast Rider, this is the uh, Gears of War 3 version, I know some people were looking for the Gears of War 2 version, but now maybe that the helmet model is in the game they might be able to bring that as a variant for the grenadier as well so uh, if you guys want to see that definitely let the coalition know that you want to see that in the game um then we get another 1500 coins more of the crosshatch weapon skin set uh then for officer 3 1500 coins uh there's a blood spray called uh carried away there which is a stretch that's pretty funny uh then there's the rift worm weapon skin set uh those are the assault rifles there we get uh, 1750 coins, 100 iron, 1750 coins again. Uh, the uh, the Riftworm weapon skin set, was that the same as? Yes. So we have the Riftworm weapon skin set there for the power weapons. Then we have, uh, we saw this in the Operation 5 trailer, the Cantus Scream expression. So if you guys have ever played Gears of War 2 or any Gears, uh, Gears of War 3 horde game, uh, the Cantus does his like shaman scream and that's how he regenerates the health of all of his allies you can use that as an emote uh with your cantus character in multiplayer now so you can yell your head off in the middle of the battlefield that's pretty cool and then uh we have 2000 coins another 2000 coins then we have i think the last of the crosshatch weapon skin set there uh for all of the starting loadout then 2000 coins then we have the scourge staff mark classic uh classically in gears of war 2 scourge has a double-sided chainsaw staff so that's a uh, Kind of a shout out to that there then we get 2250 coins at major one major two another 2250 
At Major 3, we have 100 iron. Something cool is coming up here. At uh, 2,250 coins for Major uh, 4 there. And then at Major 5, long... Oh my god. At long last, we get Gears of War 2 tie, which is called Hollow Storm tie. With this huge shoulder pad, the first time we've gotten this character back since Gears of War 2. 12 years to wait for this variant of the character to come back in a Gears of War game. Super happy to see it uh, here in Gears of War 2. So thank you to the Coalition uh, for making that happen finally for everyone who's been requesting it over the years. And then uh, 2,500 coins at Colonel 1, 2,500 coins at Colonel 2. Then more of the Riftworm weapon skin set there. Uh, with the marksman rifles, then 2,500 coins at Colonel uh, 5, at, or at Colonel 4, and then Colonel 5 is the rest of the Riftworm uh, weapon skin set, and that is the loadout uh, weapons. Then we have Major General 1, which is 2,750. At Major General 2, we have 3,000 coins, and uh, we get another Blood Spray at Major General 3, which is the Locust Rune uh, Kill Blood Spray. At Major General uh, 4, we get 3,500 coins. Then at Major General uh, 5, we get 100 iron. And then finally, uh, a fitting rank and a fitting reward. At General, we get Lambent Ram. Obviously, General Ram, Lambent Ram, it makes sense. Uh, and obviously fits with the whole uh, kind of emulsion, Lambent, Hollow Storm theme that's going on with Gears 5 Operation 5. So that's all of the tour of duty there um so what we can do now is we can go to customize and go to characters and then we can take a look at all of the new stuff here so we have anya stroud in the game as armored anya currently the only variant of the skin in the game uh back from years of war 4 years of war 3 and her she it's a big improvement this time man her hair isn't static anymore, as you can see when I'm spinning her there. It's actually reactive to the way she moves and stuff. That was one thing that bothered me about uh, some of the characters in the old games, was that if they had long hair, that it wasn't moving. But now, you know, there's a lot of detail there. Like, you can see as I'm tapping that it's uh, reacting to all of the minor movements there. So that's super cool to see. And then uh, a big one for this operation is the return of Armored Dizzy, or just Dizzy Whalen in general. Uh, super cool to have Dizzy back. He was teased a long time ago on a weapon skin set. I don't recall the name, but, you know, here we have Dizzy back, obviously fitting in with the theme of, uh, you know, Gears of War 2 and Hollow Storm. And then, uh, a big one here. Uh, this is actually the Ram's Shadow Tai Kaliso. Um, but, uh, super cool to have him back like this. I know some people, uh, you know, might have been like, oh, if we just had this armor, I'd be a bit upset. But now we have this, which I really like this armor. I love Ram Shadow. That campaign is amazing. But then we also have Hollow Storm tie right there. Look at that. Gears of War 2 tie is back. He's got his massive shoulder pad, just like he was in Gears of War 2 multiplayer. So happy to have him back. He looks so, so cool. I'm sure this will be an extremely popular skin uh, going forward in Gears 5. Uh, a lot of details there. I love the big shoulder pad. And then, uh, let's see. So, big one is that we have Gabe Diaz here now in Gears 5. Uh, Gabriel Diaz from uh, Gears Tactics. In order to unlock this skin, you have to play the tutorial level, just the tutorial level of uh, the Gears Tactics campaign. It's super easy. You can do it on casual uh, and get it done in a few minutes. If you have Xbox Game Pass, uh, you know, you can just log into the game and do it real quick. But I highly recommend just playing Gears Tactics all the way through anyway if you guys are interested in Gears lore uh, and the Gears story and the Gears universes. I, I highly recommend playing it. But we have Gabe Diaz, father of Kate Diaz, in the game now. So super cool to see him uh, no longer just working at the motor pool. Um, and then in terms of the swarm side, I'm just checking the cog side here make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh yeah, and I actually almost forgot to show Kilo Squad Baird here in the video. Uh, hopefully I don't forget anything else, but all the way from Gears of War Judgment, we have Kilo Squad Baird. Super cool to see. People really, you know, however you felt about Gears of War Judgment, one thing that everyone agreed on, that this is probably like the best or one of the best looking Baird skins 
that ever existed. The details there are crazy. He actually has his name displayed there on the back of the collar. Was that originally there, or, or is that kind of like a new added little detail? But uh, he's got those like uh, screwdrivers there, kind of, uh, you know, hinting at his mechanicness and stuff. But uh, super cool to have Kilo Squad Baird. In terms of the swarm side, we have, uh, like I mentioned earlier, this is the Locust Beast Rider. So obviously this being the, the drone variant of it uh, from Gears of War 3, not the Grenadier version. But like I said, now that the helmet is in the game, it's very possible that we could get the Grenadier version of it as well. Uh, obviously not as easy as a head swap, but now that the model is there, you know, it could be an easier job for them to do than having to make it from scratch. So possible for them to do, I would say if there's enough request for it. And then we have, uh, so the Lambent skins are not in the game at the moment. There is no Lambent Theron or Lambent Grenadier or Lambent Drone. Uh, those those are coming later on. Um, and then here's the big one right here, right? We have, uh, oh, actually, I'll save that for last. Right here, we have uh, Lambent Rom right there. Look at that. Super cool. What's funny is that when Hollow Rom came out, I thought, you know, maybe Lambert Rom could be a thing. This was always kind of like a hypothetical, you know, if he came back as a swarm type thing, this is kind of what he would look like if he came back in the story. So it's super cool to see that kind of uh, fan theory brought to life uh, through this skin. Loving it. I absolutely love it. One of the best general Rom skins we've ever had. That's, that's like two amazing Rom skins in such a short period of time. Uh, so super cool and kind of deep, uh, deeply weighted in lore. So I really appreciate the detail that the coalition go into there. And then actually, while I remember, we have um, where is it? The where is the scion? Why can I not see him? Uh, oh, here he is. Because I, I had the Krampus skin on. So we have the desert scion here. He's got the kind of balaclava over his face. There kind of reminds you of the the savage locust a bit. Um, but he's got that kind of uh, bandage going around his arm there. Uh, looks very Savage Locust-like. One of the early unlocks of Tour of Duty 5. And then, uh, last but certainly not least, we have uh, the big boy Scourge himself. This is like his Gears of War 2 multiplayer look. He's got the, the pale skin. He's got the kind of upper chest armor there. It's kind of like a combo of his multiplayer look and the campaign look from Gears of War 2. I'm curious to see if we'll get any skins for Scourge, uh, like his uh, campaign look with the red hood and cowl uh, cape kind of combo going on. So it'll be cool to see if that ever happens, but I'm sure there'll be skins for a lot of these characters in the future. So now what we're going to do, guys, we're going to hop in and look at some of the multiplayer maps uh, and kind of, you know, have a walk around and see what's new with them. The details from what I've seen have looked absolutely amazing in the background there. You can see Nexus. That's probably what we'll start with. Um, you can see the corpse are there, which is kind of like an homage to uh, Gears of War 1 and that scene uh, with Marcus Phoenix and Dom dropping that corpse are into the pit of a multi. But anyway, let's jump into some multiplayer map action and see uh, what these maps are all about. All right, so this is our first look at Nexus in Gears 5. And there is the, the corpse are right there. Here is one of the drop pods from the Derek. So this is obviously the cog spawn. You can see the holes where all the cog dropped in uh, at Landown. And they have uh, from the Derek's. Oh my god, this is so cool. And then you have kind of like the, the tiered little kind of lake area here. Oh, there's some wretches. Uh, some cog soldiers from the Locust War. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> this is... Oh, wow. This is so impressive. Uh... Holy, look at this thing, man. Oh my god, the corpse are so cool. This is just so, like, it's so Gears of War 2, man. I can't, I can't get over it. It's, it's like ruins and, uh, and highway from Gears of War 2, like, smashed together, except entirely new. But you have this, like, Gears of War 1 Easter egg in here. Oh, uh, it's cool that it's, it's, like, actually, like, a playable location. Um, there's a gate that goes up to one of the towers there. That's not the Queen's Tower, is it? I don't think so. I don't think that's the Queen's Palace there. Uh, there's a Harbour spawn there. God, this map is huge. Got a bunch of stairs here. Let's see. 
over there. Look at that massive tower over there and all that emulsion. Oh, you can go down here. God, it just, it looks like you can go, like, everywhere. <laughs> it just feels, it feels like an open world area, like all the details. Got another one of the drop pods there. Uh, nade spawn right here. I probably won't find all the weapon locations or anything. I'm just kind of having my kind of initial reaction and walk around to everything here. Whoa. Then you got, like, an emulsion waterfall here. And then, what's this? Oh, that's a torque bow spawn in the middle of the map there. Bunch of staircases. That goes back to where the corpse is. So this kind of joins back into the middle of the map here. This goes up and around. So this is like the mirror side. Uh, so there is no corpse or here. Some of my friends are walking around, by the way. There's a look at Scourge there. Uh, opposite Harbor spawn. Gate that goes up to tower as well. Uh, and then there is, let's see. The Locust spawn is going to be up here. What, is, what does their side look like? The Cog spawn looks like... Oh, so they spawn by one of the Locust Towers. You got this kind of Locust symbol pit here. And a massive lake of emulsion. So you wouldn't be surprised if everybody's uh, turning lambent as they're coming out of spawn here. A bit dangerous for the Locust side to be spawning anywhere near emulsion. Um, let's check uh, this side of the map down here. Oh, we got a bunch of the... Oh, there's a locust barge there. Is it alive? You can actually shoot it. <laughs> all my friends are like, oh, we just noticed this. <laughs> uh, you got all the prisoner kind of chambers there. Oh my god. This is so cool. Is there anybody inside? Oh, I don't see anybody there. A lake of emulsion there. Uh... And this is like the opposite side of the middle of the map. This is the dual arches that we've seen some uh, hints of in the trailers. Oh, there's a boom shot that spawns over here. Very nice. And you kind of get an overview of the rest of the map. There's a bunch of krill flying around. This is just like a campaign level, man. This is craziness. Uh, then let's see what's over here. I think this is the only part of the map I haven't been near. I think they're all looking at the, the drop pod that's over there from the Derek. Man, the amount of detail in this. This this feels like an entirely new game, except like a nostalgic throwback at the same time. Another nade spawn there. And then the kind of tiered uh, little pools of water here. You can't climb up those. Uh, and then this brings us all the way back uh, to the cog spawn where we drop in with our pods. Super cool that there's a wretch there. Uh, is there another one there? Oh, there is. But, uh, loads of little details I'm sure you guys will catch. Oh, there's a ticker. Hey! Oh my god. I'm sure there's a lot of details. Another ticker there. Man, I'm sure there's a lot of details that you guys will notice over time. I just wanted my initial impressions of this one. But let's move in to the next map, uh, which we'll probably do Regency. So let's hop in and see what that one's all about. Alright, now we are on Regency, which is a map that takes place in New Ephira, and uh, the cog spawn is a, uh, a cog memorial. So, vigilant and unyielding, resolute within the machine, they defended our order of life throughout the sacred duty. Then you have some gears paying tribute to the dead gear there, and there is some, uh, some wreaths, you got some names. In honor of those who served to all those we lost during the Pendulum Wars, uh, may they rest in peace. So this is a Pendulum Wars Memorial. So you'll probably see uh, some names on there that you'll recognize. Which is cool. The light is very bright there. I'm, current, I'm trying to look to, uh, to the side here. Uh, or Burn, maybe related to Samantha Burn, maybe? Um, yeah, a lot of... That's cool. Does it repeat the names? No, it doesn't. Oh, there's even more names. Wow. That's crazy. You got the reeds. Hey, one of my friends is in the game. A few of them are. They're all looking at this too. <laughs> this is a really cool attraction. Uh, then you got the, the eagle up there. Then we got uh, even more names, more reeds. The, that's crazy the detail in just one area. And you got the giant uh, phoenix omen on the map there. And then, oh my god. Oh, yo, you, so you see this. Well, look at New Ephira, man. It is enormous. You, like, we're up really high on this map. So I guess... Uh, I'll travel around the side here and then just kind of uh, wrap around and see all the details we can see. So here is a Bulltalk spawn. Can I look down over the side? Oh my god. 
This is crazy. It's like New Afira and the settlements are like it's like something out of Attack on Titan, I swear. Um and the gardens here. This is so This is so nice to look at. <laughs> uh got like a flower gardens here, a bunch of petals falling. The details are crazy. Uh flower bed there, pots of flowers. Uh, oh, that's the monument to Anya Stroud there. That's a statue of First Minister Jin. Is that Hoffman? That could be Hoffman. Uh, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Then here... Oh, that's one of the... Uh, I think that's like a throwback to Judgment. I believe there's like a statue and a case of armor that you have to defend in Gears Judgment. I think that statue is in the Gears Judgment campaign where there's a part of it where you have to defend like some sacred armor. I think that's a callback to that. Um, I'm sure some of you guys know the lore better than I do, even though I, I try my best. Um, then this is most likely the Locust spawn. They spawn the helipad. Maybe they came in on Reavers. Uh, you know, maybe the swarm got up here on their giant creature or what have you. So they spawn the helipad there. And then this wraps around here and we go on inside the map. Uh, like a front desk kind of area. Shock spawn there. Is that... Is this like the first minister's office in there? Is that like where Jin or Anya would sit? It kind of looks like it. It's not the same room from um, the Gears 5 campaign that you bump into first minister Jin in. Uh, oh, here is a uh, first minister Stroud picture. Which is cool to see. Then you have... Uh, the giant tribute to Anya right here. Does it say her name anywhere? No, you're just supposed to kind of assume, I guess. Just holding that golden, uh, golden book slash archive kind of thing there. Then, uh, I think, wasn't there more statues of more people over here? This is towards the center of the map. Oh, well, there's like a shield here. And another shield. So this looks like, I'm guessing, no, that's not Hoffman. I don't know who this is. If you guys know who that is, let me know. But this is First Minister Jin. 100%. Uh, we have a nade spawn here. It's actually kind of a smaller map than I thought it was. It looks a lot bigger. It definitely feels bigger because the skybox is enormous. Um, and, uh, or maybe it kind of gets wider over here. But the skybox is enormous and it's just the open sky and kind of the... The breath of, like, the giant wall going around the outside of the city. You guys can see it out there. And the buildings of New Afira. Uh, this brings you in this side. It's kind of like some COG propaganda here. Do your part, join the COG fertility program. There was a lot of mention of that in the Gears of War 4 campaign. And we got some more over here. Uh, children are our future. We build for them. Coalition of Ordered Governments. And here's a... Oh... So like a like a war room kind of thing. You got some stained glass windows in there. Very nice. I like that detail. And then there's like a, like a model of what looks to be one of the the settlements that Foundation is based off of because that tower is very similar to that, isn't it? Uh. And then I think. Let's see. My friend's playing is dizzy. <laughs> Uh, I think that's all the details on here. More propaganda. Uh, then I don't know, I didn't notice any power weapons. Like I said, I'm probably not going to specifically look for power weapon spawns, but this is actually a smaller, more close quarters map than I thought it would be. But, uh, that's it for, uh, Regency. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the one I've been the most excited for, and that is River. So let's jump into it. All right, and then this is the big one. 12 years we've waited, and, uh, you know, I think, honestly, the wait has been worth it. The amount of detail in this version of River is absolutely crazy. Look at that corpse or crashed face first through that building right there. So there are some subtle layout changes, but that will impact gameplay in a massive way. But let's take a tour around the map, and we'll get to that over time. So this is uh, the new COG spawn, and then you see the Centaur tank there from the Gears of War 2 campaign. So interesting right away what you'll notice is 
is that there's actually an extra way to get down into the river because the problem that people were saying is that what, what would happen with this map is that you would, uh, you know, be roadie running towards that building there and people would be crossing, lancering you and it wouldn't work. So they've made extra ways to, you know, if someone's dominating that position there, that you can just run down to the river and you won't be able to get across because there's all this kind of cover blocking you. But let's travel down the map here. So first was, uh, this was the frag uh, ink grenade house in Gears of War 2, which seems to now be a bull talk spawn. And then this is kind of like a classic Nasher fight area from Gears of War 2. Lots of hoppable cover, that kind of stuff. L cover. Um, looks like there's kind of a small little cog uh, outpost here. Some dead gears and turrets there. And then this is the classic double vehicle spawn, which was classically a Gorgon pistol spawn right there, I believe. Which is no longer a weapon spawn. And then right here, uh, one of the buildings, I called it a boathouse in Gears of War 2. But it's been converted into a town hall. You can see there was a gear kind of uh, holding it down. He unfortunately passed away. And there's a turret up there. And uh, a cool little tidbit is that actually there's no more crossing here. So like if you really want to get an angle down on the river. You have to run up into the building here. So that's really going to help out. And then there's the main bridge. But we'll get to that. So this layout will be very familiar to people who uh, you know love classic gears. Um... And love Gears of War 2. Uh, it's very similar. You even got the classic kind of uh, sniper peephole there. That you can look through and see the other player. Um, and then as you wrap up around here. So there's an interesting change here. Uh, you guys will notice that there's actually some cover here. And what the interesting thing is. Is that this is actually destructible cover. Now I know why they put this here. Is because the rifle play in modern Gears of War is so... Uh, is so prominent that if this wasn't here, uh, you picking up the sniper, you'd just get crossed from, you know, players over there or someone who's over by uh, the other sniper rifle. So what you can actually do is that, that this is destructible. Watch, I can I can destroy this and make it harder for them to hide. And that can be done on our own side as well. Which is very, very cool. So that's just like it was in Gears of War 2, low cover. And then I'm wondering, you could shoot out of this window in Gears of War 2 but it doesn't look like you can uh, destroy this in Gears 5 so that's interesting um, and then right here oh that looks to be that's mansion from Gears of War 1 look at that there's an interesting detail maybe a map that's on the way who knows is that can you see the boom shot there or is that like a grenade at the bottom that's boom shot spawn on mansion so that's an interesting little easter egg maybe that's a uh, an upcoming piece of content for Gears 5. And then you've got it, kind of got some more depth and detail here. Uh, some portraits that have been destroyed. Uh, you know, the mortar used to be on this map. So there's some holes there kind of as a little uh, kind of nod to that probably. Or maybe not. Maybe it's just general destruction. Um, but you have that little people there. So you can't, you can't destroy these. But you can destroy that cover that's on the front. Um, so that, like I said, that cross spot has been dealt with. So this is the main bridge. Right here, you got a locust flag for locust side and the cog kind of indicating the locust and cog side. I love that little detail there. So frag spawn here, and I believe when it rotates, uh, the scorcher actually spawns there as well. You got a <laughs> you got a dead wretch on top with some flies going around there. And then, oh wait, yo, is that a boom shield? Look at that. Yo, there's a throwback. That's so classic Gears of War 2 because everyone used to use boom shields to set up on this map. That's a cool little detail right there. And so the other boathouse is now a... Oh, there's a boom shield there as well. Uh, it has been converted into a cafe. So that one over there is Town Hall. This one's Cafe. Um, or Bistro. Depending on what you want to call it. Um, or does that say Bistro? Did I even read that right? No, Pastries. Coffee and Pastries. Uh, here's the menu. This is where the counter would be. Some more wretches. There's a till. Look at all the details. So look at this. There is a corpse or just face flat dead through the front of this. <laughs> oh my god. That's so cool. There's corpsers all over these maps. What's the deal? I think the coalition is something against corpsers. But he, it looks like he was attacking and was defeated. That's super cool. And then, uh, oh look, there's Chuz. From uh, Gears of War 4 and Gears 5. Apparently that species is just called Chuz. <laughs> they just call them Chuzzes, I guess. 
Uh, then up there, you just got some details. And then as you wrap around here, oh, there's the leg of the corpser. Then you have, uh, obviously, the opposite side sniper spawn. And then once we run down this way, we have... Uh, you know, opposite side double vehicle spawn. Uh, there's a church over there. Maybe signifying something about mercy. Um, ow, why do you do that? <laughs> then you have a little market here. The opposite side grenade house. Bunch of details. Oh, bacon. Classic little Clayton Carmine Easter egg there, maybe. Or maybe the coalition just like bacon. And then we have, uh, the Locust Spawn, which has another dead corpser. Damn, they really don't like him, do they? And this one has fallen uh, to some power lines. Is there anything else out there? Oh, there's a Siege Beast out there. A few of them, actually. Moving in towards this little town here. That's cool. That's great detail. So this one has fallen to power lines. That's kind of like almost a nod to Gears of War 1 again. Where uh, one of the berserker, or not the berserkers, the one of the Brumax got caught in some power lines, in one of the uh, in one of the campaign missions, and then we have uh, the bottom of the river here with the uh, boom shot spawn underneath the bridge, which is uh, obviously the kind of go-to place. And then you have a wretch stuck in the sewers here. All the little de all the little details, man. It's uh. It's crazy what we'll probably notice over time on these maps, but uh, just wanted initial impressions. Look, even more wretches about more siege beasts. I'm sure there's loads of little details everywhere, but that has been a look at River, and uh, let's jump into the next part of the video. And then in terms of the other maps that are here with Operation 5 Hollow Storm, we have the return of Clock Tower, uh, exactly as it was from Gears of War 4. So for those of you familiar with it, it's exactly as it was here in the game, and uh, we also have uh, Gridlock there as well, uh, pretty much just as it was uh, from uh, Gears of War 4. So those are another two maps on top of uh, the three new maps that we have. I'm basically calling River uh, a brand new map at this point because it's been 12 years since we've had it. There's been a load of changes to it. Uh, it's just completely aesthetically different, and it's amazing. I'm so happy to have it, but um, other than that, I think the only thing, other thing I failed to show you guys was if I go to weapons and then I go all the way down here, there is a new thing called Heroic. So these are brand new weapon skins. You earn these for th this one in particular, the Heroic Venom is for reaching level 20 with all of your characters uh, or with it. Like if you hit 20 with a character, you'll get one of these Heroic uh, Venom skins, so uh, that's one of those. There's one for Jack and all the weapon skins um, and all that kind of thing. And then the only thing I noticed that disappeared when I logged in was, uh, if you guys um, didn't see already, there was uh, a bunch of WWE crossover characters. If you guys are familiar with the, the tag team or the faction known as the New Day, uh, Kofi Kingston, and then we have... Uh, Xavier Woods and Big E, uh, they all have characters each in the game. I believe they all work on a gaming channel called Up, Up, Down, Down. Um, so that's obviously kind of like a continued WWE crossover happening between Microsoft, The Coalition, uh, Xbox, and WWE. Uh, we have Batista in the game in the campaign and in multiplayer. We've had him since launch. Um, so that's obviously a continuation of that relationship. And I think that fits. I think people really enjoyed Batista being in the game which means we might get more uh, wrestling style finishers in the future. But I think I have covered absolutely everything in the game, guys. Uh, if we go to my tour, here's a look at all the medals. And these are all kind of uh, named after uh, stuff in the game. So these are rewards. You get 2,000 coins for that one, 3,000 coins for that one, 5K, 2K, 5K, 5K, 3K, 3K, and 3K. So that's all the rewards. Weapons, skins, tour of duty, maps, all that kind of stuff that I believe uh, I can show you in uh, in this video. But I hope you guys enjoyed the showcase of Operation 5 Hollow Storm. Let me know if you guys will be jumping in to play it in the comments down below. But if you guys don't want to miss any future Gears 5 content or Gears of War content in general from me, be sure to drop a like on the video. 
to help support. Subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you don't miss any future Gears of War videos from me. I'll be uploading as regularly as possible. You can join my Discord, uh, which there is a link for in the description. Follow me on Twitter at the Razored Edge uh, to keep up to date with everything that I'm doing. And uh, last but not least, uh, if you guys want to check out the join button underneath this video, or it's also displayed on my channel, and there's actually a link to it in the description as well. If you guys want to become a channel member and help support me and my content, it really, really helps out. Uh, thank you guys all so much for the support on the videos. But this has been Operation 5, or the intro to Operation 5 Hollow Storm. Expect a lot more content, and I will see you guys next time.